I have discovered yet again the best feeling in the world. And before you go there, this is a family friendly program. I was just about to say, so you are a virgin. No, L, but a to do list is right on up there. And I am checking boxes off of that thing today. There's nothing that says more like washed up and old than just like accomplishing tasks. It's oh. like, it get, it really does get you off. You're like, oh my God, watching a checklist. I, oh. I have an assistant who sends me all of these things that I've been um, ignoring and neglecting. And whenever I can text oh. her back and be like, it's taken care of. I just oh. feel, yeah, it's like, a, it's like, like a superpower. Like when's the last time you just sort of went, oh, threw that one. Oh, knock that one out. Yeah. Oh, you're next. Like mm -hmm. this morning, for example, El, before we hopped on the pod, I went to the UPS store. Wow. I went to the bank. Yeah. I dropped off letters at the freaking post office. Wow. Ooh, El, I'm feeling- Post office good. visit? You are old. I'm feeling- I got stamps, El. Hold on. Wow. I, I'm a stamp guy still. El, I write checks still. Wow. I know my local bank tellers- here in West Hartford, which is a lovely town. I, I love it so much. <laughs> yeah, you're a renaissance man. We're going to get into how much the West town of West Hartford loves you back, Gary, mm -hmm. because Gary may still not have his name on this show, but he is a <laughs> cover man in the local publication. And we're going to get into all that. But of course, it seemed like at one point, Anthony Edwards was maybe trying to write a check that his team could not cash because, of course, the Timberwolves jump out to a 2-0 commanding lead and everyone's like, the Nuggets are done. Put a fork in them. Ba -ba 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 -ba. It's over. Then they win three in a row and it's like, oh my God, what happened to you? Like, what happened to you, T-Wolves? Also known as just Wolves because apparently they hate that T part from where they're from. Oh, wait, is that true? Yeah. Oh, I got yeah. that inversed. I was doing Sports Center this weekend and I was like, they don't like the Wolves part. Oh, no, they so love So I was the calling wolves. them the T Wolves. Yeah, no, they don't like the T part. I learned that. They do not like the T Wolves. They're just the Wolves. They're just the Wolves. I sometimes even go as far as to call them the Twolves, which also, you know, like is that. apparently something that they cringe and hate. It's akin to calling Boston Beantown, something Ooh. I learned when I first started working there. You don't call it that. They hate that. They don't understand it. They think it's the worst. They don't like being called the T-Wolves. They're just the wolves. An equivalent so, to like saying Hotlanta. Oh, God. See, it literally, like I want Shivers to down your spine? You. Really? Yeah. I'm glad that this Hot is virtual Atlanta. today. No one says that. Please, <laughs> thank you. Can I hop on that soapbox for a second? You guys stop it. You can call it the A. You can call it ATL. Please lay out for Hotlanta. It's the worst. And when you say it, it makes anyone from there cringe. Thank you. I just I just wanted to get you sort of get you sort of riled up and get you going before we hop hop into this. Hey, you know who's not upset that the Timberwolves um are moving on to the Western Conference Finals? Nikola Jokic. That man finally gets to pursue his passion a month early, which yeah. is horse saddle horse, horse racing. Yeah. My man yeah. is gone. Dude says, Oh, wait, I don't gotta stick around for a parade and a ceremony. I can yeah. get back to my one true love, which are my show ponies. Yeah. See you later. Bye. Thank you very much. Minnesota, but seriously, I did not expect that coming. Um, the, the the Nuggets playing on home court up against the Timberwolves team who looks so deflated after, like you mentioned, winning the first two, but then just getting smoked in these last uh, three games. And no game in this series has been close. The average margin of victory is like over 20 points per game. So I just thought, I thought it was a foregone conclusion. All right, the Nuggets stumbled out of the gates, but they have the MVP, they have home court advantage. And Anthony Edwards, while yes, otherworldly, he's going to be soon to be face of the franchise, at least for American born players. They're just not ready yet. I was wrong. <laughs> yeah. I mean, well, also because there really wasn't like in the beginning of the series, there was these sort of characteristic Ant-Man performances. But even yes. in game seven, they were down by as many as 20 in this one. Yep. And he did not go the F off. Like he didn't have some signature, you know, Michael Jordan S performance, since that's who we keep trying to compare him to. And still they're able to win the game. I think the the thing that I am most excited about, because honestly, like when it comes to the NBA, and we'll get into the other matchup, you know, we watch as yes, like just fans, but we also watch as like, 
what's best for our ratings, what's best for the company, what's helps our pension the most. I think yep. the cool thing about this particular matchup was like the Nuggets and Timberwolves are both, despite the fact that the Nuggets, of course, have won a championship, they're still both sort of mid-market type of teams. You know, yeah. I put them in the same bucket as like in Atlanta, right? Um, and so this was not one of those where it's like, man, one of these teams moving on is going to be a ratings bonanza. So it really didn't matter to me. I personally wanted to see the Timberwolves move on just because I like parody. I don't love back-to-back -back champions, even though that's a cool storyline. And I just absolutely Ooh. love Anthony Edwards for many reasons, the Atlanta in him, but also because of all of the press conferences. But I have to say, before we get to what Anthony Edwards and Carl Anthony Towns said that had me literally dying laughing in bed this morning, Michael Malone, the Nuggets head coach, was asked about how hard it is to absorb a loss like this after they were up by 20 points. And I love what he said. Listen. How hard is it just to absorb a loss like this after after going ahead by 20? Next question, man. The season's over. That's what's hard. Being up 20. The season's over. You don't understand that. The season's over. It's hard. Stupid ass questions. Yo, it's only like the last game of your season where you can be like, yo, you had a stupid ass question and you can kick rocks, you dumb reporter. Like, that is such a like mic drop. Like, I don't have to talk to you guys anymore. True. Stay for clean out day. So I'm going to let y'all have it. That was stupid and I don't like it. L, also, um, before I forget to mention, I love how you don't know how to order stamps, but you are very well versed in the Disney pension. You were like, um, well, we need a back-to-back -back champ and we need some MVPs um, in there because, of course, it would have benefit retirement. Now, do I know how to send the check after I get the dividends from yeah. said 401k and pension down? No, but no. I know that it does and will have repercussions. Hey, did you find yourself sort of divided internally? Noted Broncos fan, but yeah. you are from Atlanta and I know it is, it's not really that cut and dry for you, but- I mean, having the Nuggets, I uh, see, I like the the storyline of repeat champions. Um, at least people are familiar with them on a wider scale. Uh, but you're right. Anthony Edwards in front of a hot mic is going to be theater now given a, a bigger a bigger audience. People act like it's trying to solve the Da Vinci Code to figure out who my team allegiances are because I'm from Atlanta, but I like the Broncos. It's very simple. I'll say it for the one millionth time. All teams Atlanta, except for the NFL team. That's it. It's just okay. the what, like my parents weren't big Nuggets fans. Like they didn't bring that with them when they moved to Atlanta and had me. They didn't bring the Rockies with them. They brought the Broncos because Broncos season tickets have been in my family for 65 years. Like we are Broncos fans. That tried and true love of the Broncos. They took with them to Atlanta. They injected it into their children. And then they absorbed the hometown team everywhere else. So I'm all Georgia football, Braves, Hawks, like all Atlanta teams, save for the football team. Don't give a damn about the Nuckies. N the Nuckies. Exactly. <laughs> you can combine them all. They're the Nuckies. It's the Nuggets and the Rockies. And throw the Avs in there too. Don't give a damn. Will my parents pretend that they give a damn when a Denver team wins outside of Broncos? Sure. They'll entertain that. I'm from Denver, even though they've lived longer in Atlanta than they lived there. But yes. But other than that, like, I don't give a shit about Denver teams. You're the one that's the real turncoat. You're the one that's that true. has betrayed where you are from and doesn't support any of them. But I will say this. My favorite soundbite from yesterday, apart from Mike Malone being pissed off, was Carl Anthony Towns and Anthony Edwards. And I don't like going after reporters because I understand that this job is hard. And sometimes... Mm -hmm. People ask your question ahead of time in scrums and you're scrambling and you're trying to figure out, you know, or maybe you have a very specific angle that you're writing. So while the question seems stupid, it's like very specific to something that you're writing or a soundbite that you needed. Right. So I try not to give them a hard time um, asking some of these questions. But the reporter asked what I thought was a really silly question. And these two dudes made sure that they highlighted just how stupid it was. Listen. And usually in NBA history, it says you have to lose and lose big before you win. What is it about this team that says... We lost got... last year. Yeah, but that, that, that's different. You have to lose at a bigger stage, usually. teams. Usually it's the playoffs. Lose. We lost last year. <laughs> we lost the last two years. <laughs> Damn. How much more we got to lose? Yeah, how much you want us to lose? We've been losing for 20 years. <laughs> I mean, that's just the truth, dog. Damn. <laughs> 
Bruh, I love them so much. Like they could have a podcast and I would watch it. He's like, God damn, how much more lose we got to do? No, well, that's true. I mean, Carl Anthony Towns has been in Minnesota for the better part or for, for the past decade, really. And I think this is like the perfect example of a team embodying their leader and their superstar because Carl Anthony Towns, had they gone past Denver without an Ant-Man, he probably answers that question like straight up down the barrel. We've all heard and seen how Cat El Cato Grande interacts with the media, but this is like the Wolves almost called him T-Wolves again, just sort of like embodying the brashness of Anthony Edwards. I liked his I liked his answer ahead of game seven when it was like, hey, how important would it be for you guys to win this game for Mike Conley? Anthony Edwards was like, I'm trying to win this game for me, man. I don't give a damn about Mike Conley. Yeah, he's on the team too. And it'd be great for him, but I'm trying to win for me. What you talking about? Win it for Mike Conley. He's not dead. Right. He's still on the, he gets to move on with us. Like, damn. Anthony Edwards is, he's a gift, man. He's a national treasure. And I do love the idea that we're asking these questions. Is he new, the new face of the NBA? The answer is still no. I think he's the emerging face. Like, I think when you think about the next generation, who will be the face for the next gen, 100%, it's going to be Anthony Edwards. But it's still LeBron's league. And I'd still put Steph Curry over him, too. Um, you do need to win a championship, in my opinion, to be the face of the league, since that's the line of demarcation that we've set amongst who's great and who's not, right? Um, because if it was just about popularity or who's funny or playing on really solid teams, it could be a number of dudes. It could be yeah. John Morant, although we yeah. know he's kind of taking care of that himself with some of his antics off the court. But ultimately, it is going to be Anthony Edwards League and we're just living in it. Now, when I go back to the whole we're split and we're torn thing, of mm -hmm. course I'm talking about the Pacers and the Knicks game because you all know I am – as petty as they come. I am Petty Wop, Petty LaBelle, Petty mm -hmm. in Pink, whatever you want to say. I personally, the petty part of me thought, how hilarious for the Knicks who like really think this this is their time. This is year, their year. Like they are ordained. Despite all the injuries they've dealt with, like they jump out to this commanding lead over the Pacers. They're going to move on and we're going to get this Celtics and Knicks you know, match up in the postseason that's going to be a ratings bonanza. But the petty in me was like, how hilarious would it be for them to yet again blow another game at MSG? They can't, I can't remember how many it is in a row. And I think they've lost like eight or nine closeout games at MSG. Like this Knicks crowd who loves their team so much, filled with celebrities in every face you can imagine. And yet again, they cannot win at home. It would be so petty. But of course, the part of me that really loves my 401k was like, we we don't want the Pacers and the Celtics nah. in a matchup. We really need it to be the Knicks. But, of course, the Pacers came out and just punched them in the mouth and kept punching them in the mouth and kept punching them in the mouth. And, like, ultimately, I saw the, the, the clip of the fans giving the Knicks a standing ovation at the end of the game. And the first part of me was like, what? They lost by, like, 20. Like, don't you root for this team? No, that sucks. But when you think about what they had to go through to even be competitive, by the end of Game 7, they were missing Jalen Brunson, who, of course, broke his hand in the game. They mm -hmm. were missing Julius Randle, OG Ananobi, Mitchell Robinson, Boyan Bogdanovich. Like, those are not small names to be missing, and they still took it to a Game 7 of the semi. So... To that effect, yes, they probably outperformed despite being a two seed. They outperformed what we thought that they would based on Julius Randle not playing a single postseason game. We sort of knew this could be the foregone conclusion. But, man, we kind of got robbed of what could have been a really fantastic series. One, I still think the Celtics would have won, but still giving a puncher's chance to the Knicks just based on all the good Knicks vibes. And yet again, they can't get it done, man. I think it's always good for sport. If you take your fandom out of it completely, it's always good for sports to have the Knicks be good at stuff. The Lakers be good at stuff. Sure. The Yankees be good at stuff. Back in the day, Jeff Gordon being the best at racing, just sort of, albeit the Cowboys being good. So it's always great for business and it's great for the sport to have those franchises do well. Um, Jackson had a good note. Five of seven of Tibbs rotational players by the end of the series weren't playing. And we know Tibbs likes running a thin bench and attrition was absolutely decimating um, the Knicks. So it is kind of rich to see you give them their flowers because everybody sort of 
puts this puts this emphasis and puts this criticism on New York fandom and like if you can't get it done, get out of here. You're a bum. But I even think that like Nick's diehards understood that they were able to get to this point despite everything um, that happened to him. So I I give credit to that. Also, you want to play teams who are at full strength. So even if the Knicks were able to get by the Pacers, they'd be without their best freaking player in Jalen Brunson, right? So like you don't want an Eastern Conference Finals that ESPN is obviously airing. We flip flop every year. So next year we'll get the Western Conference Finals like. You don't want you don't want a a below healthy Knicks team in that Eastern Conference Fair. Finals because then everybody will be like, oh yeah, no, the Celtics they had the easiest route, and people are still saying that. I totally understand it, but you also don't want those storylines either. At least you're getting full strength v full strength, and there are storylines. I was I just got off of a hoop stream call because I'm going to Boston tomorrow for the series. Like Larry Bird, man, he used to run the Pacers, and obviously yeah. the connects there and. The, the young Tyrese Halliburton and Jason Tatum. And now you got like these up and coming, even though Tatum has been in the league forever, superstars finally getting their chance because I know they're in different conferences, but you know, the Giannis is out of the way in the Western conference, the LeBrons and the Stephs are out of the way. So quickly here, just to go back on your point about new faces of the league. I did have a moment last night while I was watching these games and I thought to myself, Oh wow, the league's going to be okay. When LeBron finally decides to hang it up. And when Steph finally decides to hang it up because there are likable young superstars all across the league that still have our attention. Yeah. I mean, listen, the Pacers showed exactly what they need to do to pull the upset over the Celtics. And that is shoot better than anyone ever has in postseason history. It was absurd. You guys, 67% they shot from the field in game seven, like, like bananas. Now, of course, yeah, silly. We, listen, at some point you're going to regress to the mean. That's lights out. I I don't know that they'll be able to do that. But yes, like Tyrese Halliburton made himself a bona fide superstar. What I love, too, about a story like Tyrese Halliburton is that it shows that, like, you don't have to come into the league with all of the – um you know, wind at your back. It's been four mm. years coming for him, developing into a superstar, developing into a really big name talent. And Tyrese hasn't had the best series either, you know, certainly not from some of the heroics yep. that we were showing in the regular season. But here's my one question for you when it comes to Tyrese, because again, back to being petty, love troll jobs, fun trolling. There's nothing wrong with it. That's why I love sports. Like it's, it literally is a place where all of the worst red flags of my personality come to live. You can be petty. You this can is talk be good. It's so low stakes, it doesn't matter, right? Like, you can't be like a doctor, like a neurosurgeon, and be like, you brain, I got you. Just you know, like, but you can do that. It's patients. just too serious and important. But you can, like, yeah, you can talk to other doctors and be like, yo, my brain surgery only lasted one hour. Like, you can't do that, but you can do that in sports. I do question, though, and I have a question for you. Do go on. Are you the kind of guy that trolls ahead of time Ooh. and then have to live with the consequences? Or are you the kind of guy that gloats and trolls after you've already secured the win? I say that because Tyrese Halliburton didn't say a single word trolling the Knicks at all before the mm -hmm. game. But mm -hmm. after the game, he was spotted wearing the Reggie Miller, you know, classic choke. Yep image on the front to troll the Knicks after yep. the win was already secured. And I'm just wondering, is that sort of a soft move or is that a like, yeah, that's when you do it. You troll oh. afterwards or do you have the chutzpah, the balls to do it ahead of time? Like, would you have given him even more credit if he wore that walking into the arena or walking out? I mean, yeah, walking into the arena would be cold as hell Bold, because, he's, because he's walking into the Mecca. It's one thing to walk into Gamebridge, your home court, in that right but like you got to actually like be careful <laughs> like you got to be careful walking into madison square garden with something like that but i will say i think this shows some veteran recognition here some 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 foresight here to do your shit talking afterwards because i know that there are people that that are so good at giving bulletin board material ahead of the game but but i don't think that the pro in that outweighs the con in that so i applaud i applaud his timeliness with the shit talking because here's here's what he effectively did he 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 went b rabbit at eight mile he took all the ammo away from anything that the knicks could have said after this game because they won had he walked in there with the shirt they lose 
He's got he's got no footing to stand on. But now he's a made man. He can do and say whatever he wants because he's moving on and the Knicks aren't. I love the move. Also, I'm a I'm a touch. I'm not going to say cowardice, but I'm a touch. I'm a touch um, anti confrontational as well. So I wouldn't want that pressure on me going into the 48 minutes. You know what I'm saying? Gary, I know what you would have done. You would have put a sweatshirt on reminding the Knicks of the good times just because you felt bad about beating them anyway. Like you would have been like, don't worry. There's a, you know, something that's like great year. Like there's always next year, some bull like the last time the Knicks won something, you'd have like that on there. Like, Oh, but Madison Square Garden such a cool place. Don't worry about it. You're too nice. You can't. Hey, talk hey, there, hey, there's nobility in that. You know what I mean? <laughs> there, I think, I think that there, there is a, there is a tinge. There is a certain level of shit talking in sort of that that exchange because you're like oh no nah, man you got you got you guys will be all right next year man i appreciate that this this was fun though this was fun for everybody see i would do it in like a really petty way like i'd be like don't worry you guys msg is still gonna be rocking with tons of concerts not basketball but there will mm -hmm. be plenty of reasons to come here and support like, madison square garden tom petty's best. here next yeah. week you guys will forget you guys yeah. will forget about this you guys will forget about this in, in no time it's okay guys one of the great concert venues of our time Basketball <laughs> concert. Like, don't though. worry guys you guys you still have the rangers which they do all right the Fair. rangers are in the eastern conference final that's right hockey is a thing that's happening right now well done gary <laughs> hey, like, you we, know hey, because hey, diversity and inclusion is important get your hockey work, talk in sir we work at the worldwide leader you know what i mean just for the hockey heads out there what we have here is the new york rangers the blue shirts looking for their first stanley cup win since 1994 taking on those florida ice cats who just knocked off the boston bruins in the eastern conference finals and real quick l we'll talk about what we have Actually, you know what? I don't know what's going on in the Western Conference Finals. So you know what? Next topic. <laughs> you know what we're not going to do? We're not going to talk about hockey before we talk about WNBA, though. Sorry, <laughs> because the weekend was lit. Um, we had our first ABC WNBA countdown with myself, Andrea, and Shanae, and had one really good game that was expected to be a blowout and one game that was a blowout but a closer game than it was before. And of course that first matchup on our double header was Caitlin Clark third game. And here's what I said on um, our broadcast before the game even started, right. When we talked about sort of Caitlin Clark and the idea that people are already, you know, either making excuses for her um, making excuses about how bad her team is making excuses about why, you know, the W isn't going to be interesting this year. You did not overestimate Caitlin Clark's, talent you underestimated the talent of the rest of the w right and this idea that they should soften the blow for her or make it more comfortable for her because she's gonna help them get more money and she's the reason they're getting charters and blah 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 is so disrespectful not only to the rest of the league but disrespectful to caitlin herself and i was so glad we had this conversation before that game because while yes she still had another eight turnovers and she leads like history she's made history for the most turnovers uh through her first three games in WNBA history she also had an incredibly efficient 22 point game right like she shot well she looked so much more comfortable she looked so much better the team got routed like again but whereas they got beat by what 36 points two days before to the New York Liberty they only lost by 11 because in particular in that fourth quarter they kept fighting back so like these are the small things that we're going to want to watch for from Caitlin Clark this idea that there was pressure on her to win rookie of the year and potentially MVP there's only been one person that has ever come into the WNBA and dominated from its inception like from her first game and that was Candace Parker and we've never seen anybody ever since win rookie of the year and MVP the same year other than Candace, and that's for a reason. You're going to have to get used to incremental things getting better for Caitlin, and she said it herself. I'm feeling more comfortable. I'm feeling more like myself. We saw some of those logo threes. She was shooting much better than she was in her first two games. Like, this is how we're going to have to measure success. There's a reason Indiana was able to choose number one overall two years in a row. There's a reason, okay? Ask Victor Wimbanyama what it's like to come into the worst team on the league. Like, you don't think that he'd like... For his Spurs to win some games, like it's does, it's not one person that can transform the entire lot of a team. That's not how it works. And meanwhile, we spend no time saying, "Oh, well, maybe he's a bust. Maybe they overhyped Victor Wimbanyama." No, 
He's just playing on the Spurs. There's a reason they were a lottery team. It's going to take some time. They're going to have to get better, right? They're going to have to build around her. But if you're a real fan and you give a damn, not only about this being a movement and not a movement moment, you care about Caitlin Clark, you care about the W as you claim to, stick around, you know? Like, watch the maturation. You'll be able to, at some point, look back on those first three games for Caitlin and go, wow. But what I'm hoping it does too, Gary, is that all the attention means that you're also looking at some of these other teams, right? Let the spotlight that is being shown on Caitlin also bathe everybody else on the court as well. Because we saw a Liberty team that looks unstoppable at this point after falling two games short of winning a title last year to the Aces, right? Like the second game of that doubleheader, we got to see, yes, Cameron Brink, the rookie, and Rakia Jackson, the rookie, all these attentions on the rookies. We got to see them play an Aces team that came in as a 19 and a half point favorite, fourth largest spread in like WNBA history, right? But they hung in there and the sparks looked really good and they looked solid. And Cam Brink had three blocks and she's making. So these are the kinds of storylines that you're going to have to get used to and get okay with. It's not always going to result in wins. None of these teams featuring some of these big rookies are necessarily going to be postseason or playoff teams or real contenders. But we are seeing the maturation grow from game to game. And I just encourage you all to watch, not just for the rookies, but watch the talent around them and see why someone like Caitlin Clark is struggling and stop with these bullshit. Like there's a clip going around on social media right now where it's like, man, they are giving it to Caitlin Clark in the W when she got caught up in a screen. No, her teammates didn't yell out a screen. It's just, the, it's the same thing as anything else. Like you got to yell it out. You got to say it's coming, turn around, right? Like, so stop it. It's just, it's so disrespectful to the league and to Caitlin Clark to stop with this. Like if they want to, you know, take advantage of the Caitlin Clark effect, they need to go easier on her. Sit down. And I say that because on Monday, she's about to face the same Connecticut Sun team that she mm -hmm. faced in her first game that handed her her lunch, a perennially defensive minded team and a team that is in the semis almost every single year. So like give them some break and some latitude and give them some grace. And Caitlin's asked for the same thing. Sure. I, um, yeah, the fever, their own three taking on a Liberty team last week that you just mentioned, um, who were undefeated out of the gates. The, the season is still young. I don't know though. It's, um, I understand the point of view about like, don't disrespect the other players, but also I think there's, there's a direct correlation with how much buzz this past season in NCAA women's basketball created. Now, obviously all of the, so, so many of those players are now into the NBA. And I think there has to be a recognition of that sort of value, not disrespecting the rest of the league, but there are expectations of people saying, all right, cool. You've captured my attention. Here I go. And that's why, you know, you and the big three had the record numbers um, during the tournament and the draft had record numbers and these games are getting record numbers. So I think there's a level of expectation that some people have. And while you've captured this moment slash movement with some of these people who might not have been paying attention um, up until this point, I think there is a level of expectation that they get. So nobody's, I think, asking for defenses to tone it down. I guess they just want to see Caitlin Clark in the win column a little bit sooner, right? Because we were having this conversation just this past weekend. Like, I think the fever were in the A block and we're like, well, are we going to put the fever in the A block if they're one and nine, if they're 0 and 10, you know, three and 17 halfway through the season, right? Like we got to give the same treatment to the same team, to the team who might be 19 and one. It'll be the Las Vegas Aces. You know what I mean? Giving them the same sort of, treatment and and real estate in our shows no yeah i mean i i yes and that's that's all i think anybody's asking for is just judge it the same way that you would anything else like again victor Wimbanyama highlights end up in sports center and they're an abysmal team we certainly aren't yeah. like trotting out highlights of the pistons you know we're not like we're not doing any of that but we are with the spurs because he's so compelling even if his team is not so mm -hmm. her maturation and growth is compelling enough that yes you're still going to mention caitlin clark because she's a household name more frequently than you would any other team that's you know winless out of the gate and honestly it's going to be a tough may for them like it doesn't get easier like the, the most winnable game is probably when they play the sparks and that's just because the sparks have a ton of rookies and they're a new team and a relatively mm -hmm. new coach. So like, that's probably their most winnable and they might not win in the rest of May. And so I really do think it just goes back to like, yes, there are, we, we, we trot out Cowboys talk as often as we can. They won a championship. 
since you were in like the third grade, Gary, but we still, correct. there are, there are names, there are buzzy names that of course are going to get an exorbitant amount of attention, regardless of record. I don't think there's anything mm -hmm. wrong with that. What I'm saying is don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. Like, don't say like, oh, well, she's not nearly as compelling as I thought it would be. So I'm not watching the W this season. Just remember that. Remember Caitlin Clark, generational talent is getting her lunch handed to her, her few, first few games because of how talented everybody else is. So if you're impressed by how talented Caitlin Clark is and you're talented and you and you're impressed by more than just the logo shots, you're impressed by truly her talent, then just recognize that there is that kind of talent everywhere. I think I saw some number that was like there are 41 All-Americans in the WNBA out of 144 mm -hmm. players. There are 12 teams, right? That means that like each team's averaging three or four All-Americans. Like this these are really really good Players, they're really, really good. And already you're seeing Caitlin put those things together. That ultimately speaks to who she is as a talent more than anything, that by the first game and the third game, she's grown in many spaces. Mm. She cut down the turnovers in the second game. They were back up in that third game, but she was incredibly efficient, shot over 50%. Like these are the things you're going to have to watch for because right now this Indiana team isn't that great of a team. Yeah, And they also, because they play seven games in 12 days, don't have the benefit of practice, which is something that helps you become better and gel and work out kinks. So they don't have that ability to do any of those things. I'm just saying – Stick with Caitlin, stick with the WNBA in general, and recognize there are so many other storylines everywhere. Diana Taurasi is playing lights out right now at damn near 40 years old because she's trying to make an Olympic team. Like there are so many storylines for you to glob onto that if Caitlin introduced you to the W, there's plenty of reasons to stick around. I will say this though they did Caitlin Clark so dirty with this <laughs> bobblehead. Bruh. Talk about Mike Bibby. Thank you. I literally was like, bruh. I pulled my husband over and I said, bruh, who is this? Who do you think this is? And I cut off the Caitlin Clark part. He goes, is that Mike Bibby? I was like, that's what I said. Why oh, does no. Caitlin Clark have a fade? Why does she have a fade in this bobblehead? She has a fade, bruh. Not a pony. Her nickname is Ponytail Pete for Ponytail Pete Maravich. Yeah. And she's got a full-blown fade it looks like Mike Bibby with lipstick on. This is <laughs> unreal. It's not good. And Loki, it looks like present day Mike Bibby, who's like yes. square jaw and like on that gear. <laughs> Mike Bibby, I think, lives in a gym. So this is like buff Bibby. This ain't even like Sacramento Kings playing day Bibby. <laughs> this is like big Brody Bibby. Correct. Yes. By, whoever, whoever it was that stole the Yarmer Yager truck full of bobbleheads, I got a new one for you. Caitlin's probably like, can someone steal these, please? I don't ever want them to see the light of day. It's a little bit like the Cristiano Ronaldo statue where you're hey, just like, this who? Is, this is hilarious, though, that Clark does have a fade. She has a fade, Gary. I don't <laughs> understand. Like a I have I have a fade. I have I literally I, I have a fade. This could be me. For real. Like it looks more be... like you than it looks like Caitlin Clark, for right. sure. The, the eyes need to be a touch more almond, if you will. But otherwise, this your boy, <laughs> I think. All right, we back on the L Duncan show with Gary Streisky. Um, you went and got a prop for this first story, this in case you missed it, because there's a UVA baseball player who quite literally clearly wanted to set social media a, a fire. Sure. Sure. His his, his uh, teammate was getting interviewed in mm -hmm. the dugout, and he's just real casual, like standing behind his teammate getting interviewed, eating a banana, and yeah, he's eating it like it's like corn on the cob. Corn on the cob. It was a touch. It was it was off putting. Yeah, I guess, it was if you creepy. Will. Yeah, but you, Gary, would like to enlighten me as to the proper way to eat a Thank banana, you. which will be very interesting for the people at home that are just listening. So I'm going to sure. describe what Gary's doing as he does it. Okay, perfect. Okay. I took that opportunity as a teaching moment because mm -hmm. I think, and even I'm guilty of it too. For so long in my um, life, I was peeling a banana the incorrect way, okay? And I'm sure our viewers, even our listeners can picture this right now. I'm holding a standard banana. And what do you normally do? You take this stem yeah, and, and you crack rip it. it and you peel it. And then yeah. you run the risk of mushing the top and all that stuff. Yeah. What you're actually supposed to do, L, okay? Here we go. Flip the banana upside down. Okay. Stem down. Okay. So what you're looking at is the little button at the bottom. Okay. Okay. You're just looking at the button and all you have to do, look how effortless this effortless this is. Ready? You and just pinching the little pinch. Uh-huh. 
Oh, a little banana squeezed out. Oh. And then you just you just pinch it. Oh. And that's why it folds into two. So when you see like illustrations of like animals eating bananas, it's always split into two because you're supposed to do it from the bottom. Just pinch oh. and peel. Started from the bottom. Now we're here. Maybe Drake was talking us. about bananas this whole time. That's what I'm saying. I, 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 don't even, I don't even like bananas. I like them most in smoothies. But now since I've, since I've undressed this banana, I'm going to yeah. have to eat it. By the way, I am a firm believer that you, it is impossible to, for anyone to eat a banana and not look like a monkey. You just do. You just look like a monkey. I mean, because yes. you because you take a bite and then you separate it into your cheeks. Yeah, and you, you just like... yeah, you look like a freaking monkey, bro. Like it's just it's not it's not a cute fruit to eat. It's not cute. It's just not a cute fruit. Oranges, not a cute fruit. Apples. You know what? The only fruit that's a cute fruit is grapes because you can pop them and just be cute about Ooh. it. The rest of them are kind of whack. Yeah, I the think, rest of them are a mess. Oranges spill all over your face. Yeah. Apples, you take like a big aggressive bite. Yeah. yeah. Bananas, you look like a monkey. Mangoes. Wait, is, uh, is, uh, yeah, mangoes are impossible. I eat my mangoes. mangoes over the sink. I eat them over the sink because then I just get juice all running. Yeah, they're impossible. I'm, just, I, I'm, I'm like a freaking mongrel. Yeah. Um, also, people could look cute eating cupcakes. Well, no, you. Ha I eat a cupcake with a, with a fork. I have a weird thing about... God, I, I'm walking right into this. I have a weird thing about opening my mouth too wide for food. <laughs> Someone at home is going, her poor husband. Um, I just think it's great, like with like a big burger or like a, like I cut them into quarters. You know, like I don't like this idea of taking something and being like, Gah! yeah, it just oh god. So I, I don't do any of that. Cupcake too. I like to take a fork. You can keep it clean. You can keep it cute. I just feel like you can still keep it cute while you're eating. Like, I'm not one of those people that's like, I'll let the napkin take care of it. Like, gross. I like it's because in between you reaching for the napkin, I have to look at mayonnaise on your face. It's yeah. like actually pukey. It's disgusting to me, you know? And this, and this is not just in a public setting. This is just when you're out and about or Period. even at home eating. Period. Okay. Yeah. I want to keep okay. it cute. I'm just going to try to keep it cute. Speaking of bananas, did, has no one seen a baby race? Everybody's losing it over the Savannah bananas racing babies between mm -hmm. innings. This was always really adorable at the Hawks game. We used to do that. And just watching parents do anything that they could dangle treats, candy, a toy, like come and get it. Just play fetch with their babies. Mm -hmm. um, like, please just come and, and, you know, mama wants to get this gift certificate to Chili. So just like, and like some of them get really into it. They like yell at their babies. They're like, crawl faster. It's just like, it's, it's a little not bizarre. too late to put you up for adoption. Yeah, no, I get it. I've been to a Savannah banana game, Savannah bananas game when they do that. And I'm like, damn, I don't think these kids love their parents. No, they, they don't. are more infatuated with this grass. But that's the thing is like, I think that the cheat code here is you've got to put something there that they're not used to. Like they always crawl to your mm. parents. You're boring by that point, right? They're it's like not used to. Yeah. It's like, I come to you all the time, but if you were to, I don't know, put something that they were interested in, like for Xander, if I just put like a vat of Cheez-Its right there, Ooh. he would just, he would bolt. He would be Usain Bolt to the Cheez-Its because that's, he's more interested in that than just crawling to his mom. Who's just going to pick him up. Honestly, he's probably like, yo, you're just going to change my diaper. I'm not coming to you. I'm not doing it. You know the cheat codes, L. And I, that I respect you for that. No, you don't know how to buy stamps, but you know these parent cheat codes. Correct. Yes. Mm -hmm. One day, one day, young grasshopper, I'll learn about how to buy stamps. And finally, <laughs> there was a UCL, UCLA softball player who was being interviewed post game. I actually love that the post game interviews have become like team rituals where they yes. get in on the act and make things interesting. Um, I'm super into it. So she's being interviewed. And as she's being interviewed, her team is like piling things onto her, putting things on her head, making her hold things yeah. just to prove that she can multitask. Well, I'm wondering what's the thing that you're most proud of Gary that you can do at the same time as doing something else oh, apart that's... from you eating a banana while you're podcasting. No, that was, that was actually, that was actually my first foray into that. So I'm pretty impressed that I was able to do it while also completing the banana to which I don't even like. Um, and I, I think recency bias here is just getting, getting stuff done on my to-do list next after this, guess what I'm doing? I'm changing what? some ring freaking batteries. And wow. then, and then what am I going to do after that? Oh, I forgot something at the post office. So I have to go back. So I just think it's, <laughs> it's just my grit and my grind. And my 
and my and my motor, my high motor skills that are just going to allow me to just rip through this to-do list. I love that for you. I Thank love you. that for you. Yeah. I actually felt accomplished this weekend as well because yesterday I did, and I'm not exaggerating, about 16 loads of laundry in like four hours. I don't even know oh. how it's possible. Yeah, I just, I kind of blacked out. Um, there was so much, and a lot of it was, most of it was clean. There was just 12 baskets of clean laundry. And it was like, you know, you keep complaining that you don't have any clothes, but honestly, they're all just in the baskets. So I got that So you that had to done. rewash them? No, they've been clean. They've just been sitting in baskets, like just oh. sitting in like laundry baskets, not in the hamper, like clean Got clothes, it. sitting there ready to be folded. You know, that's oh, just the that's hardest the part. Worst. Right? No, the washing part's easy, bro. It's the folding part that sucks. And putting it away? No, thank you. It's not great. Um, Before we get out of here, though, we do have to talk about your star turn on the cover of West Hartford Magazine. Oh. Um, I There is now, now I, 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 I don't want to take away from what I think is a really impressive okay. cover model appearance for you, but I will say this. West Hartford has two magazines. They have the West Hartford magazine, which Gary's beautiful face is on right mm -hmm. now, but mm -hmm. they also have a specific one called Over the Mountain. Oh. Um, and that's just for the elite few that live near Mountain Road of West Hartford. Um, and so, yeah, so you haven't really been the face of West Hartford till you've been on both, but alas, Gary, you've got to start somewhere. How Whoa. on God's earth did you end up on the town publication? Full I story and everything. I just think that there are a lot of people who probably didn't return the call. You know, I just think that there are probably a lot of people who are on vacation or had their not phone true. on do not disturb. Gary, not true. Don't be humble. You're the biggest star they've ever, like normally it's like, Meet Rebecca. She lives on Balfour Road with her kids. I'm like, what's the point of this? It, it's literally just like, she is a mom and she works at blah, blah, blah. I'm like, well, what's the story here, though? They literally just sort of meet this person that lives on this random street. So you are by far the most famous person to ever be on that magazine. I just think that they I just think they like to highlight different pillars of the community. And as a fellow West Hartford resident yourself, there's only 66,000 of us per the 2022 census. So really, the pool is quite small. And of course, after your book came out, For You, I Will, featured prominently behind my right shoulder, I was like, wait a minute, I have to find a way to put myself in print too. So here it is. I'm covering up my address. DL, have you gotten, I know you live over the mountain near yeah. the aforementioned area. Yeah. Um, have you received your copy of West Hartford Lifestyle? I have not yet. I just saw it at okay. the grocery store. It was at the I grocery store? Yeah, I should have bought it. I should have bought it. I was just waiting on my copy signed by you. They charge for these? So, okay. No, I it was in the free stack, but still. Oh, I got to swing by there then because I need it. I've gotten singles of requests for signed copies of this from my direct family mainly. So I did this phone call about a month ago and a wonderful B um, who works in ESPN PR and marketing um, is a staunch advocate for a lot of us on the sports center side. And she thought it would be a great opportunity. The synergy, if you will, we love tossing that word around um, as a fellow West Hartford resident herself. So yeah, I did this little interview with, um, I believe his name was Brian Boyer. And I just sort of mentioned how I love walking the streets of West Hartford, getting coffees with my dog and hanging out with the missus. You know, it's really, it's it's some light reading, Ellen. I would highly recommend it for you. Also, there are many it. ads where you can get nice massages and some oh, coupons. Lawyers. My guy, MJ, who runs the local Clothier here in West Hartford is prominently featured. So it's nice, Elle. And again, um, I think the picture will pop up here, maybe in post edit. This is far better than the last time I was featured on the cover of a editorial publication. And that was the Boston Herald. And you would only know that it was me if you saw the before picture. <laughs> the, dude, the Zoolander face you're making on that Boston Herald cover is like, you are literally like, it's giving so much zoo. You're doing the blue steel face. I didn't know that anybody was taking a picture. Somebody left in the comments that I look like handsome Squidward and I can't unsee it. <laughs> no, I'm serious. Elle, I can't unsee it. I'm like, holy shit, I really do. That's nuts. <laughs> that was a decade ago. But yes, get your copy of West Hartford Lifestyle. Yeah. Ever. They are giving them away for free. Yeah. I love that for you, Gary. I love it. You know what I mean? Listen, 
Maybe I would be compelled to add someone's name to this show if it's specifically they were a cover model. But you're going to have to hit all the West Hartford publications before we can talk, okay? So until you're on Over the Mountain, an additional West Hartford publication, we're just not going to be able to talk about it. But I'm proud of you, and I'm happy for you, and I hope you frame it. I'm going to, L. It's my only copy right now, so it's a one of one, even though I think 70,000 were printed. Okay, this is the only one that I got. They were, and if you have a contact for over the mountain, L, I would love to reach out. Maybe we can do a tandem story. Okay. Oh yeah. Maybe, we can, maybe they can feature both of us on the cover. Well, no, I never wanted to do it because they quite literally in that one, like give your address. I'm like, nope, that's not Wait, cool. What? Don't want to, don't want to be like, they literally will be like this person and this person lives on blah, blah, blah street. I promise you. I'm like, no. So I'm not going to do that <laughs> at all. Oh, Cause that's. You know, the weirdos, I'm not, I don't want to be on the magazine cover so much that I'm willing to sacrifice my address to the weirdos, but uh, I would love that for you. I would love that for you. You think I'm just an open invite to here's where I live. Come on by. You're right. I am. You're a big, Come scary man. Gary. You're a big, scary man, Gary. I don't think anyone's going to mess with you. You know what I mean? They're Damn. afraid of homie. I'm just saying. No, that's true. That's true. You ain't lying. I'll make sure you get a copy L. Thank you so much. Uh, that does it for us. We will be back in studio on Thursday with more shenanigans. Remember, you guys, to tell people about the podcast. You can get every Monday and Thursday. Wherever you get your podcast, you can watch us on TV. On Thursdays now, right? Like, we're taping on Thursdays. Right. You can watch us on E2 every Thursday from 2 to 3 p.m. If you want to see our beautiful faces, certainly you want to see that cover model's face on Thursday. And we will. Until then, see ya. What do want to be ya? Elgo, knock out that to-do list. <laughs> Can't wait. It's more laundry.